Welcome back to 15th Street Automotive. Today we're working on a 2013 Kia Rio, uh, 1.6 liter. Uh, customer's concern is that uh, when you're coming to a stop or taking off from a stop, it will stall uh, and then it's hard to start. So um, I just uh, got back from a road test on it and uh, it, uh, it stalled on me. Uh, took a little bit to start. Uh, but the way it starts, it almost feels like a, a coked up throttle body. So uh, we'll get into this thing and uh, I'll bring you along. Uh, it's got a PO335 crankshaft position sensor A circuit. Well, that would do our, uh, that would cause a stalling problem. But the way this thing started, it felt like a coked up throttle body. So the way this thing was stalling, it feels like a uh, coked up throttle body. Um, I'm going to pull the air box off and I'm going to show you that throttle body. I've already been in there and already cleaned it. Uh, before I uh, decided to film this, um, but I'm going to show you how I get in there, and I'm a, I, have a, I took a picture of it before I uh, uh, cleaned it, so I will uh, I'll post that uh, uh, on the screen here, and you can see what it looked like before, and uh, I'll show you what it looks like now. Uh, but the uh, uh, if that throttle body gets uh, dirty, which they all do, you know, at about 60,000 miles, they're they're coked up pretty good. This thing has almost three times that miles. Uh, that throttle plate has a very small uh, clearance around it in the throttle uh, body, and uh, it's that's a calculated clearance that allows a certain amount of air into the system to idle. And if that gets coked up, uh, the uh, uh, the computer thinks it's up open a certain or has a certain amount of air coming in, and it might be restricted in half because of the because it's so coked up. So what we do is we we go in there, clean it up with car, uh, carburetor cleaner and a rag, clean it up nice and shiny, and it's uh, it, it restores that uh, uh, the proper idle uh, idle air into the engine. Let me show you how I did it, and then we'll move on to uh, scanning this thing for codes. Check your air filter, make sure it's not filthy. It's not too bad, it's not great, but certainly not our problem. So the throttle body is right here, and uh, I'll pull you down in there and look at it, but uh, take a look at this picture I'll post into the, uh, under the screen. That's what it was, and now this is what it looks like now. You can see how much cleaner it is in there, nice and shiny. The uh, the proper idle air has been restored to where it's supposed to be uh, and that creates uh, a, a much more stable idle. All right so with a PO335 uh, code stored in there I pulled up some service information on it. Uh, that is the position of the crank position sensor is right on the bell housing just below the starter uh, with it up in the air, it's pretty easy to get to. <clears throat> uh, this kind of is a description of how it works. Uh, there's 58 slots at six degree intervals uh, on the reluctor wheel. Um, so here's a code description. If the crank position sensor cannot find reference mark two or more times during starting, it sets the PO335 code. <clears throat> um, So if the signal input, it, no signal input is detected, uh, the gap position is missed or the gap position is not found, 
or the teeth number between consecutive gaps is not correct, <clears throat> it sets that code. Come down here, you should be able to see, yeah, we got a lab, uh, lab scope, uh, what it would look like for the lab scope. So basically, it's got a, it's got a missing tooth, and then it's got 58 humps, and then a missing tooth. So that's what we're looking for. So let's hook the lab scope up to it and uh, take it for test drive. Here is the crank sensor right here. And then the harness goes up over to this connector right here. Uh, and it's the, uh, looks like it's a brown and a white with maybe a green tracer on the, the circuit. So actually we can access this from up top. We'll back probe that connector right there and uh, uh, and then we'll take it for a test drive, see if we can't see that uh, crank sensor uh, blink out uh, when it stalls. So here's my setup here. Uh, I've got my lab scope probe down there into the brown wire. There's a brown wire and a white wire uh, on this particular one. Uh, I'm into the brown wire. That's the signal from the crank sensor and I have the uh, uh, other side of the uh, signal uh, grounded to the uh, uh, negative battery terminal. All right, so we're going to go drive this thing, and I'll keep the lab scope on the screen there, hopefully. And uh, I suspect what you're going to see is that signal breaking down when this thing stalls. And either not being there or or being uh, a poor signal when it won't start right back up. So we'll go drive this thing. Hopefully we don't get stranded. You just watch that crank sensor signal. I switched our lab scope to the Autel because my uh, U-scope was... Uh, getting low on batteries. This one gives me a little bit better uh, capture screen. A little easier to control it on this one I think. Uh, so I'm just gonna go drive this thing and uh, see if we can't get it to glitch and not leave us stranded. So I've taken this uh, Kia Rio out for about four test drives. Uh, ca uh, crank sensor uh, is working perfect. Um, no codes have reset. It hasn't died. Uh, it died on me on my first road test. Almost didn't restart. Uh, that's when I checked all my codes, found out I had a crank sensor code in there. Um, <clears throat> based on the... Uh, um, set criteria that code uh, our problem is likely a faulty crank sensor uh, just very intermittent um, it's a pretty common uh, problem uh, I just uh, had the service advisor speak to the customer and uh, uh, he's authorized us doing a crank sensor based on uh, um, the symptoms that we have uh, symptoms that are occurring um, between that and the uh, uh, throttle body clean that we did on it, uh, I think this one's going to be fixed. Um, sometimes you've got to uh, uh, take the information that you're given and make an educated decision. Uh, that's what our customers pay us to do. Um, my sense is that we have an intermittent crank sensor, uh, crankshaft position sensor, and uh, it's uh, just not showing itself now. It only happens to the customer uh, every few trips. Um, we're not going to keep driving this thing for a week to, to verify it. Uh, we're going to take the information that we're given and, uh, and make an educated decision. So uh, this thing's going to get a crankshaft sensor and a, uh, uh, we, uh, we had already cleaned the throttle body. So uh, Wish I could have shown you a failed crankshaft position sensor on a lab scope. Uh, basically what you'd be looking for is that signal that uh, I showed uh, as I was driving it. Uh, that signal would break down. Uh, instead of being 58 nice um, uh, AC sine waves, 
uh, in between the the gaps it would be uh, it would it would glitch and it would be pretty obvious but uh, um, if you're ever doing one of these and you uh, and you have it on a lab scope uh, you'll know it when it goes bad but uh, this one decided it was going to be elusive to us but we'll fix it anyway thanks for watching